If you've noticed that you walk something like this, then it could be the sign of a pretty major problem that you're going to want to fix. And in today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why walking like this can happen and what to do to fix it. My name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s specialist physio here at HT Physio in Farnham. And it's my job to help over 50s to overcome painful problems, to improve their mobility and independence and get strong and active again. So a hip waddle looks something like this, and we call this a Trendelenburg gait. That's the uh, technical term for it. Now, apart from the funny appearance, the reason you don't want this to be the way you walk is because that kind of walking has been shown to be associated with more back pain and more knee pain. And the reason it isn't good for us is because when our pelvis kicks out to one side, the line of force going through our knee is not going straight down, it's now going inwards like this. So it puts a lot of pressure on the inside of the knee and the fact your pelvis is going from one side to the other, that can also seem to tighten up the lower back muscles and it's been associated with a higher risk of overall back symptoms. So not good. Now Trendelenburg gait is caused by one major thing for most people and that thing is weakness in your glute muscles okay so you've got a set of two gluteal muscles at the top of your hip called gluteus medius and gluteus minimus and their job is to keep your pelvis level when you go from one leg to the other so if they're not doing their job every time you go onto your right leg your pelvis drops and every time you go onto your left leg your pelvis drops down the opposite way so weakness in these two glutes is often the reason why people have this funny hip waddle walking. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to fix the weakness there because the good news is muscles can be strengthened and that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. So I've got three exercises to show you today to help you fix a hip waddle and they're all designed to strengthen your glutes. But these are not gonna be suitable for absolutely everyone watching. So do get checked out before you give them a try. And if they cause you any pain, then just avoid them. Now for the first exercise, we're gonna use your bottom step on your staircase. I've got a little plastic stool here, but I wouldn't recommend that just because it's not quite as solid as your bottom step. So you're gonna stand on your bottom step for this exercise, just on one foot. You can hold on to your banister, either in front or behind, whichever feels most comfortable for you. And what we want to do here is keeping that one foot on the bottom step, you're gonna let the other leg drop down without bending this knee. So if you look at where I am now, my pelvis has dropped down to one side, even though my knee is straight on both sides. Now the exercise is very simple, but sometimes it's not easy. All you're gonna do, keeping your legs straight, is hitch that pelvis up, and then let it drop back down again like that. And then hitch it up, and then let it drop back down again like that. So it's up to two, and probably down to one, two, three. Up to two, down to one, two, three. And what we're doing here when we do this exercise is we're activating the glute on this side of the hip to pull the pelvis up and then really slowly lowering it back down. So when you finish a set of this, you're probably gonna find the leg of the standing side, the glute here feels pretty tired. And that's exactly what we want. So you're gonna keep doing repetitions until that glute starts to feel fatigued. And then you would swap over. So you swap over to this side. I'm just gonna hold onto the wall here for stability. I'm gonna let that pelvis drop down again, hitch it up, and then really slowly let it come back down. Hitch it up, and then really slowly come back down. And on this side, it's now my left glute that's working to lift the pelvis before it drops it back down. Remember the one that you're standing on is the one that's doing most of the work. You are still getting a little bit of work on this side, but it's mostly that side that's working. Now, one of the red flags for this exercise is if you notice that your back on the, on the side that's hanging down is starting to get tight, that's because you're trying to use one of your back muscles to do the lift. So keep a hand there, this is a top tip, a hand there just to make sure you feel that that lower back muscle is not tightening up too much, you might not have to lift it quite so high to keep the back switched off. Because if you lift it really high, 
that is going to kick in. So you might just want to go to 80% up and then all the way back down. Keep doing it to the point of fatigue, somewhere between, I don't know, 10 and 30 repetitions in a row on each side, three times a day works super well. Before we go any further, I just want to tell you about 3-Tip Friday. 3-Tip Friday is my weekly email that I send out to my list, and it features three of the most interesting things I found that week. It could be a health tip, it could be a piece of research I'm reading, or it could be a new tool that I've found to be really useful for helping people get more mobile. It's totally free, I just send it out once a week, there's no annoying promos inside, and you can sign up for it by going down below this video and entering your email in the 3-Tip Friday link. The next exercise we're gonna to do to fix that hip waddle is the single leg dip. And this is a great exercise, again, for your glutes, but it also work your quad muscles too. So for this, we don't need the step. We're just gonna use something to hold on to. So it could be a kitchen worktop, it could be a wall, just something you can use to give you some stability. And we're gonna stand just on one leg. Now, as a side note, if you've got quite a bad Trendelenburg hip, you'll notice as soon as you stand on one side, your pelvis drops to one side. So the first thing I'd like you to do is just try and correct that. So we want to be in exactly the same position on one leg at our pelvis as we are when we're on two. So the first thing to do is try and correct that drop to one side. So you're just on the one leg like this with a nice stable level pelvis and all you're gonna do is stick your bottom out and bend your knee very slightly just until we get about six inches down and then come back up without letting your pelvis drop to one side. Easy as that. So keep it nice and level, come down, keep it the same and then back up. And then down, keep it level and back up. And down, keep it level and back up. Now I can already start to feel this working in this glute because I'm working super hard to keep my pelvis level because it's easy to do that. And now you'll just feel that in the quad, nothing in the glute whatsoever because you've basically given up with that gluteus medius and minimus. It's just not doing its job anymore. So we need to keep it so that that pelvis doesn't drop down no matter what. It's almost like your belt line has got a glass of water balancing on it, and if it drops to one side, the water's gonna go on the floor. That's a kind of weird, funny visualization, but for some people that works well. So once you've done your one side, you're gonna swap to the other. Again, keep the pelvis nice and level, come down, keeping it the same, and back up. And then down, keeping the pelvis level, and back up. Down, and back up. Now, if you look at this movement, it's like bottom comes out and the knee bends at the same time. Don't just try and keep your, your bottom in because you'll get stuck with your ankle. You won't be able to go far enough down. So we do want to allow that bottom to come out a bit, which gives us a bit more depth before we finish the movement. So that's a really nice way to just uh, get a bit more out of this exercise. Now the same rules here apply. Keep going until you start to get a working ache. 10 to 30 repetitions work super well. Three times a day, really, really good way to get those glutes stronger. And I've got one more exercise to show you today. And the final exercise we're going to do to strengthen those glutes is a clam against a resistance band. Now I love this exercise, even though it's non-weight bearing, it goes really nicely with the other ones because it's, it's really good at isolating that gluteus medius and minimus if you do it correctly. So the clam is an easy movement really. You lie down on your side, you want your body rolled forward like this, have a hand there just for support, and you're just gonna lift that top knee. But we want to challenge it a bit more. So if you can, we wanna be using one of these. So I'm gonna put a resistance band around both legs, and we want the band up around the knees. If you've got hairy legs, probably wear some trousers because it hurts otherwise. So what you're gonna do is bring those knees up towards you like that. Have that hand down nice and flat. You wanna keep your heels together, keep the pelvis forward, and then just lift that top knee just until you can't go any further without rolling back and then slowly come back down. Now you might be quite surprised to see how little I can actually lift the leg without cheating because that's as far as I can go and then I'm gonna bring it back down. Because if I was to go any higher, I'd have to roll back, which is how many people do it, and that's how many people cheat as well. It takes the emphasis totally away from the glutes onto something else entirely. But if we keep the posture good, so keep your body forward, hand down like this, just move the leg, nothing else moves at all, 
you're gonna really feel a squeeze in your glute at the top of the movement and then slowly back down like that. And then just keep repeating until you start to get some fatigue in the upper outside of your hip there. Those are your glute muscles working. Just keep doing it until you feel you can't do any more because the achiness becomes too great. Then stop, roll over and do the other side. Now I would repeat somewhere between 10 and 30 repetitions, works perfectly three times per day, all, all in one go with a very short rest in between sets. And you've just done a brilliant workout for your glutes. And hopefully that will help you fix trend Ellenberg and hip waddle really fast. So that's how to stop hip waddle and improve your walking. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, then do just drop us a comment below and let us know, because it does help us to improve this channel. So thank you if you do that. And obviously, as we found out, hip waddle comes down to weakness in some of the key muscles in your hips. And I've got loads of exercises and bits of advice about fixing hip weakness and weakness in all other areas of the body in my new book, Thriving Beyond 50, the 2024 edition. You can pick it up on Amazon or all other book retailers. It's 450 pages worth of my best advice and exercises and strategies to help you improve your health. So thank you very much. If you do choose to pick up a copy, there's a link below this video to help you uh, find it on Amazon. And anyway, other than that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and I'll speak to you again on the next video.